So one of the most remarkable features about the court in an age of incessant leaks uh, is the confidentiality that long covered its internal deliberations. Unfortunately, uh, that changed this last term with the horrific and completely unprecedented leak of your draft majority opinion in Dobbs. Uh, how has the leak affected the court? It was a grave betrayal of trust by somebody. And it uh, was a shock because nothing like that had happened in the past. So it certainly changed the atmosphere at the court for the remainder of, of last term. The leak also made those of us who were thought to be in the majority in support of overruling Roe and Casey targets for assassination because it gave people a rational reason to think they could prevent that from happening by killing one of us. And we know that a, a man has been charged with attempting to kill Justice Kavanaugh. It's a pending case, so I won't say anything more about that. Uh, but um, that was last term. Um, now we're, we're in a new term. I think that all of us want to, all of the justices, and I think the people who work in the building, we have a wonderful staff, um, I'll add that, want things to get back to normal. Uh, the way they were before all this last term, before COVID, get back to normal to the greatest degree possible. And uh, that's what we hope will happen. And I think everybody is working on that. You know, during my 16 years on the court, the justices have always gotten along very well on a personal level. I think the public, when they read our opinions, probably misses that. Um, we sometimes, you can see by reading those opinions, we sometimes disagree pretty passionately about the law, and we have not in recent years been all that restrained about the terms in which we express our, our disagreement. I, I'm as guilty as others probably on this, on this score, but um, none of that is personal, and that is something that I think I wish the public understood.